In this video, I would like to do a more complicated example to show you what can happen if we're not really sure um, what's happening in a problem. We can still figure it out. We just have to take a guess and then um, see if our guess was correct or not. Okay, so in this problem, we're going to have two blocks that are stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to draw my two blocks like this, and I'm going to have a smaller one on top. So this will be block A and block B. And then let's assume that we have a string over here that's exerting a tension force um, on these blocks. Okay, so what information do we know? Well, let's say that we know the mass of object A is one kilogram, the mass of object B is five kilograms. Um, let's say that we know that mu k is 0 0.2 and mu s is 0 0.25. Okay, so um, this is the information we have and we want to know what happens. Okay, well, it's a little tricky because depending on what happens, we might have kinetic friction or static friction. Um, and so we have to just take a guess and see if our guess ends up making sense or not. Um, oh, and let's say that we know the tension as well. Sorry, we want um, tension to be 20 newtons here. Okay, so my first guess for what happens is let's say that the blocks stay at rest. Okay, so the theory here is that maybe the tension is not big enough to overcome the friction. And so um, when you pull on the, the rope or we pull on the string, nothing happens. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to treat the two objects as one single object. Okay, because in this case, they'd be moving together or not moving at all. And so I'm just going to call that object AB and I'm going to draw a free body diagram for that system of A and B. All right, so um, what forces are present? Well, A and B have some mass, which means that they're going to have some weight as well. So G on AB by the earth. Um, they're not falling through the floor, so there's some normal force on AB by the floor. There's a tension force on AB by the string. And then um, my guess is that they're at rest, and so I'm going to draw my friction force on AB by the string, or rather, um, by the floor. Okay, so this is my guess, and let's um, plug in numbers and see if these numbers work. Okay, so um, the gravitational force on AB by E is just going to be six kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. So that's going to be 60 newtons. Okay, and looking at my free body diagram, I can see the normal force will be equal and opposite. So normal force on AB by the floor is also going to be 60 newtons. Okay, I know the tension that is given. That's 20 newtons. Um, and then the friction on AB by the floor would also have to be 20 newtons in order to cancel the tension. Okay, but I know that the friction force, the static friction maximum, um, is going to be the mu s times the normal force. And mu s is 0 0.25, and the normal force is 60 newtons. And so the maximum amount of um, friction that we can have is going to be 15 newtons. Okay, so um, I can't have the friction exceed the maximum friction, which means that this is not right. So my initial guess is not correct. The blocks do not stay at rest. The tension force is enough to overcome the friction. Okay, so let's then assume that the blocks slide together. Okay, so if that's the case, then my free body diagram looks basically the same. I'm just going to have a slightly smaller friction force. Okay, so um, in that case, I have still the gravitational force on AB by the Earth is going to be 60 Newtons. That's also going to be the same size as the normal force on AB by the floor. The tension on AB by the string is still 20. Um, but now we're going to have kinetic friction. So um, the kinetic friction on AB by the floor is just going to be mu k times the normal force on AB by the floor. Okay, well, the kinetic friction is 0 0.2. We had that given. So what that means is the friction is going to be 0 0.2 times um, 60 newtons, which is 12 newtons, okay? So um, the friction force is 12 and the tension is 20. So the net force in the x direction is going to be uh, tension minus friction, which is 20 newtons minus 12 newtons or eight newtons. And that's going to equal mass times acceleration. So we have eight newtons is six kilograms times A, or the acceleration is going to be eight divided by six. So 1.33 meters per second squared. Okay, um, So if they're sliding together, that's what we get for the acceleration. But we should check, does this number make sense? So in order to check whether that acceleration works or not, I'm going to consider the free body diagrams for A and B separately now. Okay, so for A, we're going to have a gravitational force on A by the Earth, a normal force on A by B, and then A is going to accelerate to the right. Right, because everything is accelerating to the right in our initial problem. The tension is pulling everything to the right. Um, but there's no tension force on A. The tension force is on B. And so if there's no tension, there's no other forces present, the only thing that we can have that can be causing A to accelerate to the right is friction. So this is friction force on A by B. Meanwhile, we can draw a free body diagram for B. 
So what will be on that one? Well, the gravitational force on B by the Earth is bigger because the mass is bigger. We had a normal force on A by B, which means that we have to have a Newton's third law pair for that, a normal force on B by A. They should be equal and opposite, so I'm going to draw that a little bit bigger to be consistent. So it's going to look like this. Um, the floor is pushing upwards on B, so in order to cancel out these two forces, we're going to have a bigger upwards force, so normal force on B by the floor. We know there's a tension force that's actually exerted on B, so we have a tension force on B by the string. We have um, a friction force on A by B, so there has to be a Newton's third law pair for that. So friction force on B by A, equal and opposite. And then finally, one more, there's a friction force on B by the floor. Okay, so this is the most complicated free body diagram that we've done yet. Um, we have six different forces that are present on B and three forces that are present on A. Okay, but we already know several of the things. Okay, so we know some of the forces already, and we know what the acceleration should come out to if this works, because we already calculated that the acceleration is 1.33 meters per second squared. Okay, so in the case of A, we have GAE equals NAB, because A is not accelerating up or down, and that's going to be um, one kilogram times one meter per second squared. So both of those are just going to be, sorry, uh, times 10 meters per second squared. Deceleration due to gravity. Um, and that's just going to come out to 10 newtons. Okay. Um, if we look at Newton's second law in the horizontal direction for A, then FAB is the net force. So net force in the X direction is just FAB. And that's going to be one kilogram times 1.33 meters per second squared the acceleration that this is going to undergo. So the friction force is just 1.33 newtons. Does that work? Well, we have static friction between the two objects um, because they're not sliding against each other. That's what we're guessing happens in this case. So we just check. Um, if I use Fs max equals mu s times the normal force, I have here um, mu s is 0 0.25. The normal force is 10 newtons. So I get 2.5 newtons. That's the maximum static friction that there can be on A. And what we figured is that the actual static friction is 1.33. So that is consistent. The actual friction is less than the maximum allowed friction. Okay, so that's good. We now know those. Then for B, um, we can figure out the vertical forces, the normal and gravitational and all of those. Um, but what I'm really interested in is the horizontal forces. Okay, so we know TBS is 20 newtons. That one's given. We know FBA is going to be equal to FAB because those are Newton's third law pair. And so that's going to be equal to 1.33 Newtons. Um, we don't know FBF. Um, we can figure that out. Um, that's going to be the kinetic friction times the normal force on B by the floor. Okay, so 0 0.2 was the coefficient of kinetic friction. The normal force on B by the floor is 60 Newtons. Okay, that's the same as what we figured out here. Um, because the normal force on A and B by the floor is actually the normal force on B by the floor because the floor is only touching B. So that hasn't changed. You could also figure it out based on these three forces adding up to zero. So um, that would give you the same answer, just in one more step. So 0 0.2 times 60 is going to be 12 newtons. Okay, so what do we have in the horizontal direction for block B? The net force in the X direction is going to be TBS minus FBF minus FBA. And that's 20 minus, I'm here, I should keep my units in there, so 20 newtons, minus 12 newtons, minus 1.33 newtons. Okay, so 20 minus 12 is 8, minus 1.33 is 6.67 newtons. And that's equal to the mass times the acceleration. So um, the claim then is 6.67 newtons is um, 5 kilograms times 1.33 meters per second squared. And in fact, this checks out. Okay, so that's a correct equation. And so our guess for what was going on here works. So in fact, what we have is um, blocks A and B move together. Um, it would be possible to yank on the string for B so hard that A fell off the top. If that happened, what we would have found is that um, at this point, when we calculated the um, friction on A, it would have been too much. It would have overcome the static friction that we were allowed to have. And then we would have had to say, okay, well, we figure out the kinetic friction on A and what value that is. Then we know the kinetic friction on B in the diagram here. Um, and then we can go through the same calculation that we did over here um, in order to figure out what acceleration B has and what acceleration A has. So sometimes with a problem like this, you have to just guess what happens. And if it doesn't work, then you try a different thing. Um, eventually, you'll get to a combination that makes sense.